Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. We're making good headway now through the first paper of the past papers from 2016. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written how to take your ABRSM Music Theory exam and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time once you're actually in the exam room. So this is an exam technique guide book. So if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be fab. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And so now if you turn with me um, to page five in your past paper book, we're going to carry on with this first paper. So we're just going to carry on with um, the last part of question three. Three. And so the previous questions were referring to this little piece of music here. However, now it's just going to ask some general orchestral questions. Uh, so I'm hoping you've had a go of this yourself, first of all. Always write in pencil, even in the exam, always write in pencil and have your trusty eraser to hand and have a ruler and then we're ready to go. Okie dokie. So Name a standard orchestral string instrument that usually or normally uses the alto clef. Just ad libbing there. Well, we know that's the viola. Uh, slightly deeper instrument than the violin. It's a lovely sounding instrument, actually, I think. Here we go. Okay, name a different family of standard orchestral instruments, so different than string now, and state its low its sounding members. So if we were going to choose um, woodwind, uh, the lowest instrument there would be bassoon, or I suppose if you wanted to be um, particular, we could say the double bassoon, either of those will be acceptable. If you chose to answer brass, the answer would the lowest instrument is the tuba, so that's that one. Answer true or false to each of the following statements. A violinist may sometimes be asked to play sol G. Well, that means on the G string, so uh, yep. And a trombonist may sometimes be asked to play con sword. That's with the mute. So yes, uh, I guess that would literally kind of be like saying uh, shove a sock in it. So yeah, mute that. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to the next question now. So we've got some uh, scales to be thinking of now. Now, I always suggest that before you start the exam, you write out your um, circle of fifths, so you've got all your major and minor keys to hand straight away with the key signatures, um, because that way you've thought of it once and it's just there for you to refer to rather than keep having to scratch your head and use your brain every time you come to a new sort of um, scale question. And you would also need to refer to that to your for your intervals as well if you want to be sure what's a major or a minor interval. Uh, so if you've already got your scales written out, it's kind of job done really here. It asks us to add the correct clef, so that's one part we've got to do. Any necessary sharps or flats, okay? Don't use a key signature, we're using accidentals. So for F sharp minor, to begin and end on F sharp, this would need to be in the bass clef. If we wrote any other clef, it wouldn't be accurate. Now, F sharp minor is related to A major, which has got F, C, G sharps. So we can do that straight away. Remember, the F sharp comes twice, once at the beginning, once at the end. And then there's our C sharp. 
and G sharp. Remember, we're descending. So if it is that you're not comfortable reading basic clef, just write your letter names underneath F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then you're just making that easier to um, think. Do anything you can to make it as easy as possible and to clear your brain. And so um, that's the key signature now added as accidentals. But to make it harmonic minor, we need to raise the seventh. Remember, we're descending now, so it's eight, seven, and that gives us an E sharp. So that's that complete, nice and easy. Write the key signature of D flat major and then one octave ascending. So we've got to do the blobs ourselves this time. Use semi briefs or whole notes, so there's no need to be worrying about stems. So the key signature of D flat major. We've got B flats, E flats, A flats, D flats, and then you go one beyond the key note, so we've also got G flats. There we go. And then we need to write one octave ascending. Make sure you're in treble clef, so we start here, and if we're starting on a space, space, line, space, so make sure we're doing next door notes, don't miss any. Remember, scale means step. So we need to have every line and space accounted for. If we do eight, that should give us to D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we've ended on D, so we know that's accurate. There we go. So uh, that's it. Nice, easy one there. Let's turn the page and see what's um, going to greet us. So just get that in frame. Okay. Oh, I like these questions. This melody contains five deliberate mistakes. How naughty. Rewrite it correctly on the blank stave below. Well, let's find the mistakes and then we can worry about that afterwards. Uh, we'll do the thinking and then it's just copying really, isn't it? Well, straight away, uh, well, have a glance through yourself. Make sure you've had a look. First of all, yourself, press pause, see what you can find and then re-access into the video. Straight away, here, this is in the wrong place, it should be here. It goes clef, key signature, time signature, sort of alphabetical order there. What else have we got? Here's another one. We've got an accidental here, but it's not placed correctly. If it's next to this note that's on the line, the line should go through the middle of the box, so that's been positioned too high. Now then, uh, this, is incorrect. Although the timing is correct, in compound time you can have that but you can't have it the other way around. It has to be um, sort of the note, rest, rest. We need to show each new beat. That one is acceptable because it's sort of very easily seen as that. So that rest, although it's mathematically correct, isn't correctly written. We need to show those rests separately. What's in the next bar? Oh, here we go, just a simple stem. It's below the middle line, so the stem should go up. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, one more. Let's see what else we've got. So here, this isn't correct, the timing. So we'd either need straight quavers for the timing to be accurate, or we'd need dotted quavers, semi-quaver there. So either of those will do. So it's up to you. Just as it stands, that isn't accurate. I think I'm going to go for the dotted version just because then it matches this, but that would be accurate. You could decide to get rid of the semi-quaver and just create three equal quavers. Just whatever makes this timing now complete. So there we go, we've done the thinking. We've just got a little bit of writing to do, so we'll just take that a step at a time. So F sharp must be positioned on the top line, but before the time signature. Let's just get some blobs in. I'm trying to keep it aligned because it's quite busy and I don't want to run out of space. 
and so we need the sharp to be positioned on the line. I'll worry about stems in a minute. You can copy it in any order you like. There are the rests. You need a really sharp pencil because there's quite a lot of notes to fit in here. That will be our stem scenario there. And then I'm going to go for the dotted version. You could do straight quavers or eighth notes if you want to. And that's that. Just copy this last bit, no mistakes there. Okay, so stem down has written. I think I'll use a ruler. So there's our second mistake corrected. There we go. Third. Stem upwards now. So either add a dot or remove the extra little beam and then just copy to the end. I'm just copying that quickly, maybe you should take a little more care there. Okay, next question. Rewrite these alto clef notes at the same pitch, that's the important thing, but using the bass clef. So we've got to make sure that we, we don't end up jumping an octave inadvertently. So don't forget, this is middle C here. So we've always got to be thinking, here's middle C in the bass clef. So here we've got the E flat above middle C, C, D, E, C, D, E, flat. If you wrote the wrong octave, then you'd lose marks because it's not the same pitch then, is it? So let's think, let's work out C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. So that's a whole octave lower than middle C. So there's middle C, so a whole octave lower will be this one here. Okay, so this is going to be quite high again because you think here's a middle C, C, D, E, F, G, A sharp above middle C. So we're going to need ledger lines here. C, D, E, F, G, A sharp. So we should above the three ledger lines there. It's just a matter of counting it carefully. Make sure you're always counting each step, line, space, line, space. So now we're going the other way, we're going from treble clef to alto clef. Same principle though, just keep your eye on where middle C is. This is middle C in the treble clef, this is middle C in the alto clef, and just work it out from there. C, B, A, G sharp. C, B, A, G sharp. So here, this is the B, one, three, five, seven notes above middle C. So one, three, five, seven. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. There we go. We are making great headway. And so this last question is actually my favorite, favorite question in the whole paper. Uh, I think it's just really uh, easy marks. So the key is D minor and we need to uh, describe these chords. So we need to remember we're looking for chords 1, 4 and 5. So D is the first note of the scale, D, E, F, G is the fourth and A is the fifth. So if we build the triad from the first, the third, and the fifth, D, E, F, G, A. Your key signature will take care of any accidentals. So G, A, B, C, D. 
A, B, C, D, E. Now don't forget this middle note here in D minor we raise the seventh note of the scale D, E, F, G, A, B, C is the seventh and so that will always need an accidental of a C sharp. So that's the thinking done now. And so here chord one we can see straight away is going to be our chord, well sorry not chord one, the first chord question one is going to be our chord five before we've even read any notes this sharp sign here tells us that that's our raised seventh and there's our C sharp A A C sharp E is chord five so you could just put your Roman numeral for chord five remember the Roman numeral means it's a triad built on the fifth if you just use a number five that means a single note or you could also give it the proper name, the technical name, dominant. Either of those will do, or both. So let's see what we've got here now. D, A, D, F. Don't forget your clefs here. So that's chord one. That will be the tonic. And then chord three, the third chord, G, G, D, B. That's chord four, or you would say the subdominant. And uh, that's, I think, 15 easy marks if you just do your thinking in the first place. We've got a little bit more sort of um, extended thinking in this last question here. We've got to write the triads named below. Don't use key signatures. So we've got to write the triads. Don't use key signatures, but remember to add any necessary sharp or flat signs. So in C, let's just work out straight away what our key signature would be and then we can apply it as necessary. So C sharp minor, if you've got this written in your uh, list of circle of fifths, you'll know that this is re related to E major and it's got a key signature of F, C, G, D sharps, four sharps. Now the subdominant, so one, for C sharp is the, although the key signature takes care of that, C, D, E, F sharp is the fourth. However, you only really need to count up four, C, D, E, F. So let's write our F and then you just build your triad. Line, line, line gives us first, third, fifth. So you don't really need to think about all of this. You can just get the first note and build your triad from there. Now we've got an F sharp, a C sharp. We know that the F and the C need to be sharpened because of the key signature. There we go. So E minor is related to G major, so we've just got a key signature of F sharps, and the dominant is E, F, G, A, B. So let's build our triad first of all, first, third, fifth. So we know that the F should be sharpened because of the key signature. However, remember in the chord five, we saw that in the previous, the seventh is raised, and if you think if E is the eighth, next door down is D, that's the seventh. The D should always be sharpened, and it always forms the middle note of your dominant chord. So we need to add that accidental for the raised seventh. So E flat major has a key signature of B flats, E flats, and A flats. They want the tonic chord, so uh, we want an E which is here. I'm going to go low just so that I don't end up having to use loads of ledger lines. First, third, fifth, and we know we write because there's the B next to the C, E, G, B. First, third, fifth. If you find it easier, by all means, just write out your chords like we've done here, just to work those out. So we need an E flat, G, B flat. So by all means, if you find it easier to write out your chords, then you can see easily where your key signature is going to apply rather than reading it on an unfamiliar clef. And, and that's that. That's that paper quickly completed. I do hope that's been helpful to you.
please do go to SharonBill.com and make use of all the resources available there. If you can give me a like, that'd be really encouraging to me. I do hope that you're enjoying this as much as I am. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.